Hello and welcome back, amigos. I eat whatever I'm craving. <laughs> you can place it in a regular <laughs> a crock pot. Como ser something else. Clouds engage, you guys. Buen provecho. Se va y se corre con el taco. Ah, iba a decir con el borracho, pero. So you're gonna add your desired amount of whiskey. Oh, how many shots was that? Don't worry about it. Oh, you're trying to use your oven? Friends, you know, with the Mexican household, we keep extra dishes in the oven. <laughs> it's like Sex in the City, she used to keep uh, her sweaters and her cashmere. Uh, we keep pants. <laughs> I love it. You guys should know that rajas means slices, right? The rajando. Yes. Uh huh. And then you can also say in, in Mexican culture, no te rajes, which means don't quit. So don't quit while you're ahead. Oh, I like that. I think everybody that remembers uh, me doing mukbang, you remember when I used to tell them, if you have a single, you know, a family member or whatever, make sure to help them making uh, dinner, picking up the kids at school. Good looking out. Um, now I'm the single mama and... Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to make some quick and easy chicken tacos and the fun doesn't stop there, amigos. I'm gonna show you how to make that refreshing drink y'all been asking me about on Instagram. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you how to make creamy chicken and potatoes. For this recipe you're going to need three chicken breasts and you want to slice your chicken breast into thin little strips like this. Align all your chicken strips and just slice them in half. And I'm going to continue slicing the remaining chicken the same way. Once you're done slicing your chicken into strips, go ahead and add two tablespoons of baking soda. And what that's gonna do is gonna give us a tender piece of chicken and it's also gonna eliminate odor. To your blender, you wanna add your heavy whipping cream. And if you don't have heavy whipping cream, make it comfortable for your home. That is correct, Cloud. Thank you for helping our friends out. Next, you wanna add your chicken broth or your chicken bouillon and warm water combo, which ends up being the same thing with extra flavor. Garlic, chipotle, and your ground cumin. Next, we are gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. I rinsed our chicken and I made sure to pat dry and remove all the excess water. Next, you wanna add your salt and combine. Next, you're gonna combine your flour and cornstarch mixture and add half at a time. We just wanna coat all of our chicken uh, evenly, but you don't wanna overdo it. So depending on the size of your chicken, you're gonna need about uh, one fourth of a cup or one third of a cup. And once you're done, make sure to clean your area and clean your hands. I'm gonna start a pot of boiling water so we can start boiling our potatoes and then we're gonna move on to the chicken. To your pot of boiling water, you wanna add your potatoes and be very careful. I don't want you to burn yourself as you splash me. And I just want you to boil these potatoes for about eight minutes. You want them to be a little bit al dente, not fully cooked because we are gonna be straining them and adding them to our, um, our delicious pot that we're gonna get started on right now. Set your burner on a medium high heat and add your desired amount of oil. You're gonna need enough so that we can sear our chicken. Allow about 30 seconds for your oil to get warm and add your butter. Let your butter do a dance in the pan, that way you don't burn it. And combining your butter and your oil, you prevent the butter from burning. Oh yeah. And next, you wanna start adding your pieces of chicken. Make sure not to crowd your chicken so that we can get a really good sear. Work your pan little by little, and once you start getting a good sear, you can move some of your chicken to the side, and then you can start adding the remaining pieces. And we're gonna be here for about, I wanna say six to seven minutes. Next, you wanna add your onions.
We're gonna add our potatoes and our sauce to our cast iron. And to our blender, we still have a little bit of sauce stuck, so I'm gonna add about three fourths of a cup of water. I'm gonna shake it up. You didn't tell me it was gonna smell this good in here. <laughs> it's so good, right? Mm -hmm. That garlic really comes through. And you wanna pour it right on in. Go ahead and mix your ingredients gently. Once you're done combining your ingredients, set your burner on a low temperature and we're gonna to continue to cook without a lid for 15 more minutes. And after 15 minutes, we are all done. What I like to do is I like to sprinkle a little bit of cilantro over the top for a garnish and also for flavor. And boom, done, amigos. Our delicious dinner is served. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh. Ooh, the lioness came to work today. It's called humidity. <laughs> <laughs> it just jumps up and grabs you no matter where you're at. Mm. I have a trivia question for you. If it's hot and humid, what do you eat? Oh, me? Yes. I eat whatever I'm craving. <laughs> I'm the same <laughs> I really do. Friends, everything in this plate is so soft and tender. The chicken is cooked to perfection with so much flavor. You're gonna love it. Mmm. Provecho. You know, the flavors are sealed in the chicken, and look at how easily it can cut through. So yummy. And you want to take some of that broth with you, right? Mm-hmm. You need you need some extra sauce for sure. So we, so it can be best friends with the rice. It's a must. Mm-hmm. Yummy, and if you don't have red potatoes, that's the best for this dish. Use gold or russet potatoes. It's gonna work out. And what if I don't have chicken, but I have everything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. But this chicken is a showstopper. It really is. You have to try it. Mm. Friends, sorry about my eating yesterday with the tacos. I didn't mean to offend anybody. It's just that when it's me and tacos, it gets really intimate and we're eating here <laughs> in my home with friends. So that's how I enjoy tacos and I enjoy food. Maybe the person or the people were not familiar with the taco rule. You must finish your taco in less than three bites. Mm-hmm. Mm. Let us know how many bites it takes you to finish one single taco. Yeah, let us know. And for this chicken, you guys are gonna really love this recipe because you can take a lot of chicken and season it, sear it the way that I showed you and fully sear it and cook it and then let it cool and freeze it so that whenever you add it to your pan the next day or two weeks later, it's super easy to make this dish. It freezes well, just make sure to fully cook it. And even if you were to not cook it and coat it with the, with the flour and your seasonings, um, it'll, it'll still work. How do I know? Because it's a lifesaver. The texture of this chicken is fabulous. And it's mm. not spicy. Mm -hmm. There is no spice in here unless you want more spice. And if you really like your food spicy, I suggest you add a whole can of chipotle instead of just one little pod. But I have a lot of family members right now that can't handle spice for some reason. You sound like you have some experience. You said, the full can. Mm -hmm. And if you guys like this combination of chicken, let me know in the comments and I'll make another dish um, similar to this, but just change it up just a little bit. I have a feeling 
that everybody watching is gonna end up making this recipe. It's always the stewy or the guisados that um, families end up loving the most, right? Yes, this is a very, very special dish and I think you guys are gonna make it famous just like you've made a lot of our dishes famous. So thank you guys so much and I hope you enjoy and that you feel loved and cared for by Cloud and I. We love you kids and I mean all of you. Hope you have a nice weekend. And now I'm gonna mix the rice with all this sauce and I'm gonna have to get more. Ooh. Mmm, so yummy. In today's episode, my beautiful sister is going to show you how to make your favorite comfort dish, but transform it into enchiladas. It's the season for it. <laughs> You're not <doing> <laughs> Hello and welcome to my kitchen, amigos. I'm not just gonna raja ha, ha, ha with you. I'm gonna show you how to make raja enchiladas. And this is probably the easiest recipe that we have on the channel. And what we have to do is roast our poblanos, which I've shown you plenty of times here on the channel. And if you guys don't know how to do that, I'll link a video in the description area. Now, let's start rajas. Rajando. <laughs> Preparing your rajas. Yes, the cloud. Yes. Prepare your rajas. Let's prepare. We gotta slice. You guys ready to slice this? I'm ready. Well, I mean, you guys should know that rajas means slices, right? The yes. rajando. Uh huh. And then you can also say in in Mexican culture, no te rajas, which means don't quit. So don't quit while you're ahead. Oh, I like that. Slice, and you want them to be not too thin and not too thick, but you can always make it comfortable for your home. Continue to slice. Your poblano chili. We're gonna use this portion for our enchiladas and this portion we're gonna use for the topping that we're gonna need. So 80% of the peppers are going into the enchiladas and 20% is for the topping. Yes, so make sure to set this little part of your rajas to the side. Nice one. Take your poblano that we set to the side and we're just gonna finely chop. Watch your nuggies. I am, but I usually dip them in sweet and sour. <laughs> oh, good. Know what you've been doing. I know. Been bad. That floral aroma that you get from roasted poblanos is just absolutely amazing. You guys know what I'm talking about. But for those of you that want just a quick light snack, you can put a little bit of salt and lemon over these and just enjoy them as a, as a snack while you're watching your Netflix or your favorite programs like Views on the Road. Hey. Wow. <laughs> you put, it in there. put it in there guys <laughs> <laughs> take your tortilla and place it into some oil and all we're doing is softening our tortillas so that they're easier to roll okay mom show us what you got <laughs> crack your cans open <laughs> And I'm just gonna pour them into a different uh, measuring cup because it's a lot easier for this particular recipe. Okay. Careful, careful. I know what you're, what you're insinuating. What is it? The Christmas story when he's pouring the BBs. <laughs> you're so lame for that. <laughs> hey, I just like how much you know me. I do know you well, honey. I know you so well that I know you wanna lick that top. I do, thank you. Like it, guys. Me. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to use my finger. I'm not going to get caught up in this or cut up in this. It's under control. All that sauce that's in there, get it out. You need it. Everyone has that family member that licks the spoon right to something, like when they're baking or cooking. I'm that family member. You were never like that. No, you know who used to do that all the time? Cool. My ex. My ex-husband used to do that. He's a spoon licker. So if he ever makes you guys foods... Uh, or recipes, make sure that you guys watch out because he's a spoon licker. He doesn't lick the spoon. Oh, yes, girl. He does it like the, the sexy girls at the ice cream shop. Dang, he was just at my house too a couple weeks watch ago. Watch him. Watch him. Once you pour your sauce into your cup, you're going to sprinkle a little bit of salt, just a little bit, and some pepper. Mix, mix, mix. 
Pour some of your sauce on the bottom of your baking dish. Distribute that evenly or as well as you can. Place your cheese, your poblanos, corn. And for those of you that need some protein in here, which I know some of you are gonna say, Steph, can we use chicken? You sure can and I'm, I'm ready for you right here. Some nice shredded chicken. And you can use your rotisserie chicken. You can even make this recipe with shrimp and it's just absolutely amazing. Pour your sauce. Ooh, your roasted chicken looks so beautiful. Thank you. And roll. It's okay if you get sauce on your fingers. Yes. Don't did lick you... it until you're done rolling. Oh, sorry, I was gonna ask, did you make that chicken in the Instant Pot? Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> Are you gonna talk to our friends about that you got me addicted to tepache? This spring we don't have anything to say it's just that I have known how to make the bunch for a very long time because my mother has an excellent recipe and it's very simple it's not it's not so much I want to say as as complicated as we all make it out to be it's yes, very it's very simple Mexico's probiotic drink I it think is. every country has their own little drink but this one's not as bubbly or fermented tasting. It's smooth. It's, it's smooth. really, it's really, really smooth. That's right. Okay. I hope that you all love using the deli for the enchiladas. Mm -hmm. And you know, here in the States, we have access to just the most amazing things to cut your time, not the flavor. And that's where I'm at as a single mama. I'm trying to spend as much time as I can with my babies while we transition our life. And you know, fall more in love with each other. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's what we have to do. For those of you that have family members, some of you like protein, some of you don't, someone perhaps wants more of a vegetarian, um, I'm gonna show you what I do in my tray to make it easier to pick which one doesn't have the protein. Because okay. I do have my little one, he's not too fond of protein. So if you wanna keep the ones on the ends as your veggie ones and the protein ones go in the middle. It usually works out a lot better for you. Or if you want to make two trays, make one veggie and make one for the meat eaters. Yeah, you can use the tray that um, I do the wet uh, burritos in. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use that one. But my babies have been wanting to try more foods, so that's why you guys see my portions are a little bit less. And we're definitely supporting our local community by uh, door dashing every once in a while and trying uh, mom and pop shops uh, to keep our economy going and, and keep all of you guys paid. So that's what, that's what we've been doing. Nice. And now it's time for the sauce pour. Pour it over. And with this one, it's not the kind of sauce that you run out and you want to go and mix it with some milk. This is not the sauce you want to do that to. It's a great sauce on its own. I have to go and clean my kitchen after this. Is there any particular song that you listen to to help you pump yourself up? Yes. Because I have one, but I don't think it's enough. Which one's your song? Some funk? Um, no, I, when I clean, I do cumbias. So Sonora Dinamita is on first, and then I do some corridos, and then I do country after that. Yes, mija, I love to clean with some Selena. I knew you were going to say that, so that's why I didn't use it up. Yep, at the Astrodome, the live, that's the one that does it for me. So after you pour your sauce, you're going to go ahead and add bits of butter. You're going to need one to two tablespoons, and you're going to have to wing it from that point, okay? Just little ones. I'm telling you, it's going to make a difference. I am so grateful to be here today to taste these. You should. They're really good. Again. They're they're really, really good. I was craving rajas, and I've been craving everything raja style. I don't know if it's the cheesy, poblano, roasted it's aroma. It's the season, babe. It's the it, season. It's the season, right? It's la época. Mm -hmm. Okay. And next, we're going to add our cheese. Could these be called enchiladas even though you're not using any the chili sauce chili sauce well friends I, i'm gonna let you guys uh let us know in the comments but for me if you roll it up and you have it saucy like this it's an enchilada style um and i would say yes it qualifies tiene chile okay i'm just asking for for a friend for friends uh, i get that a lot <laughs> take some of your corn and sprinkle it down the middle just let it fall where it's gonna go just let it happen with a lot of love I'm so excited to see this recipe in your guys' uh, metal trays for your family uh, dinners. I love, love, love seeing your enchiladas, your roasted poblano. 
And for those of you that like it, you can use a little bit of you can use a little bit of pepper to sprinkle over the top because when you're using the deli cheese and it melts, it kind of st stays um, stays put. So it adds that beautiful look to it. We're gonna place these in the oven at 380 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. It's usually somewhere 20 to 22 for me, but since not all ovens are created equal, you know, keep an eye on it. Oh, you're trying to use your oven? <laughs> Friends, you know, it's a Mexican household. We keep extra dishes in the oven. <laughs> it's like Sex in the City. She used to keep uh, her sweaters and her cashmere. Uh, we keep pants. <laughs> I love it. And boom, done, amigos. Let me try and divide this deliciousness because I almost want to just go sit and eat this whole tray. You know, the kids were reading and they paused because of the smell that came down here, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like Edward Scissorhands with plates. <laughs> just don't cut my hair. Excuse me, I'm the one, only one that cuts your hair. What are you talking about? Well, with the Edward Scissorhands. Ooh, 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 ooh. Delicioso. Yummy. Yummy. What I have here is a rotisserie chicken from my local HEB. And all you wanna do is you wanna just make sure to shred your chicken. Nicely, a lot of you like to put it in your stand mixer. Go for it. I'm gonna thinking about these tacos and ice cream. Oh, oh. <laughs> now with that special drink you're gonna show us. Oh, that drink is gonna be fire, friends. Make sure to stick around to the end. It is gonna keep you so nice and fresh, and the best part is that you will be able to spike it if you want. Yummy. A lot of you moms have been asking me for some wonderful drinks, and that's one that you can spike up. Or things you can put in your adult sippy cup. Your adult sippy cup, yes. And for the chicken, I really don't need to do anything, but I love pepper, and that's the only reason I'm adding a little pepper. If you like any other of your seasonings, this is the moment where you wanna add that. And all we're gonna do is warm up some tortillas, friends, and I don't mean to brag, but I did get the 80 count from HEB, and these are great for making this style of tacos and a lot of other tacos, and you guys know, they're great for everything. I love HEB. <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm gonna run with you. The other 60 tortillas that were in there. We don't wanna talk about that here, but if you guys follow us on our personal Instagram, we'll share more about that. Take your corn tortilla and place it in your pan. What we are doing here, we just wanna warm up our tortilla all you want to do is warm it up 10 seconds on each side just so that when we fill our tortillas with our chicken, it's not falling apart. And that happens with any corn tortilla. I really like this burner, but why are we cooking on it? We're currently cooking on a burner because we have a lot of friends that don't have access to a stove at the moment. And no matter where you're at, if you're at the park and you have your burner, you have a grill, you guys should be able to make really good and delicious food. And I love you guys. And make it comfortable. For your home, wherever that might be. That's correct. Once you warm up your tortillas, you wanna add some oil to your pan and add a good amount until you cover the bottom of your pan with oil. We're not deep frying today, but we do need a good amount. If you want them crispy, bring on some oil. Don't look at me like that, Cloud. You are gonna enjoy these crispy tacos today. I saw you eating carrot sticks. <laughs> Take your corn tortilla and fill it up. What I like to do sometimes, just so that it doesn't move, when we place it down is I like to squeeze the chicken because it's so nice and soft that it doesn't need anything to bind it. You don't like the way it moves, right? I do like the way things move, but just for this chicken and the popping purposes, you don't want that. I appreciate you. So once you fill it up just like this, you're gonna place it into your hot oil. And when you're gonna place your taco down, make sure that you're placing it down and away. Remember, down and away. That's why you want to pick the thinnest corn tortillas for your tacos because once you're done uh, prepping and placing that last taco, you already have to flip it because they're so thin and everything's already nice and cooked inside. So you're saying it's going to cut my time. It's going to cut your time. Quick but and easy. But not the flavor. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I love that kind of cooking. <laughs> And you see how when you have the thin tortillas, you can just even put them flat like that and boom, done, you know? 
so beautiful. I didn't know, but now I do. <laughs> when you're making tacos, remember to place them on a rack and let that oil drip off on its own because what happens if you put them on a paper towel, they just absorb the moisture and it creates steam and we don't want that. I'm gonna continue with the rest of our tacos. Add your green salsa. If you need help making a green salsa, we'll link the recipe in the description area. Add your tacos, your cream. your avocado, your guacamole, your salsa, lettuce, cotija Mexican cheese, thinly sliced red radish, and some pickled purple onions. Now, for those of you that have been asking me about that drink on Instagram, it is quite refreshing and addictive. You are gonna need key limes. If you don't have key limes, you can use a lime or a lemon, but for those of you that love those tart flavors, get the key lime. I'm gonna squeeze two key limes in here, and Clouds, I'm only gonna make with one because she doesn't really like it. She likes a drink, but she doesn't like things that are super tart. I like things that are mildly tart. Mildly tart? Mm-hmm. Yes. You're very well balanced, Cloud. Thank you. I'm centered in the lime department. Okay, so go ahead and add that. You're gonna add your favorite hot sauce. The sauces I recommend are Tapatio and Valentina. And friends, I'm gonna tell you something. This is a great drink for hangovers in the morning. Some tajin. But I'm also gonna say, if you have some kind of indigestion situation going on, that's it's a really good drink for that. For indigestion, yes. It is, it helped me out a lot. It's because I had a lot of tacos that day. I'm gonna add some chamoy. Cloud, are you gonna want chamoy in yours? Yes. Really? I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, you can choose any type of mineral water. The best ones are the Topo Chico or your HEB brand. The HEB brand is a little bit less carbonated, but it's so good and refreshing. You're gonna pick whatever flavor that you like. We have the lime, we have the grapefruit, and we have the original. I'm gonna go with grapefruit. Cloud, what do you like? Let's go with the original. I knew it. Such a classy lady. Basic team right here. Ooh, ooh. Go ahead and pour it in. And I will let you guys know that this it's so good, you just wanna sip on it all day long. Where's my little spoon? Here it is. Go ahead and mix all your ingredients. Perfect. Once you mix your ingredients and you taste it, go ahead and add a little bit of salt. I like it salty, because it has a tartness. Hear that? It can't because my wallet, I'm salivating over here. <laughs> Are you? Now here where it's gonna get really fun. For those of you that love the regular ranch water, this is your ranch 2.0. We're gonna get really dirty with this. And I love whiskey, but for those of you that love tequila, I don't feel like having a confession today. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna add your desired amount of whiskey. How, how many shots was that? Don't worry about it. Just for our friends, so they know they're gonna friends, make it just like you. I will make a suggestion down below, but remember to always make it comfortable for your home. I've tasted this. I'm gonna add a little bit more lime to mine. Like I said, I like it tart, almost like a whiskey sour with a kick. Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs> friends are gonna ask you to rim it with chili. Huh? Our friends are gonna ask you to rim it with chili. This remember with chili? It's too much, isn't it? For the chili's already inside in the tahini. Oh, I can rim it with chamoy. I don't like to rim mine. Oh, for this one, it's because it's on the go. Yeah, exactly. Friends, you can rim this, you can do whatever you want, but remember, this recipe is a quick and easy one. We want to get our drink and our tacos, so make sure that you're adding crushed ice. It tastes way better with crushed ice. And boom, done, amigos. Let's give this a good taste. Salud. I love it, I love it. You know when that lemon hits you in the back? Right here, just perfect, that whiskey. Woo! Say ah! I'm gonna get so messy. Mmm! Mmm, mmm, mmm! 
So good. That salsa is perfect. The chicken is perfect. The crunch is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the whole combination is amazing, friends. When you pick up your taco, don't put it back down. Just eat it and come back and just dip it in that sauce. And it's just perfect. This is so good and the sauce is just perfect with your taco. You want to pick up anything that you drop in that sauce, in the salsa. So it's your spoon. It's your spoon, it's your tortilla, it's everything. Amigos, you're going to have to excuse me because I'm just going to devour these tacos and make sure you tag me when you make them because this combination together is that good. And if you spiked it with a little whiskey, please let me know. Let us know. You know where to find us. Mm. Hello and welcome back amigos. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the best meal prep chicken you'll have this year. It's not just good for tacos, which is what I'm making right now. It's also really good for um, to put over your rice if you want to place it into a torta, a sandwich, your tostadas. And the best part of this chicken is that if you serve it, it gets a little bit cold in the lunch. Don't worry, it's still going to taste really good because we have a cold uh, yogurt sauce that's absolutely divine. So go ahead and keep watching if you want to learn how to make these tacos and most of all, if you want to make this chicken. For your seasoning, you'll need one clove and that's the spice, half a tablespoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of black pepper, half a tablespoon of salt, half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, half a tablespoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of sugar, and two cloves of garlic finely chopped. Well, coarsely chopped. You, you know what I mean, guys. <laughs> Go ahead and add your seasoning to your chicken. It sounds like you're recording by a rainfall. Yeah, we have a rainy day today. It's actually really beautiful. I'm not excited about the humidity, but it is a beautiful sound, and it's so pretty to look at. Go ahead and massage your chicken with the seasoning for a good minute, minute and a half. Be gentle, don't be aggressive. Not for this part, okay? Once you've massaged your chicken with the seasoning, you're gonna use the juice and zest of one lime, two tablespoons of olive oil, and if you need to use less, that's okay. And if you don't have olive oil, guess what? You can make it comfortable for your home. You're gonna add one third of a cup of chopped parsley, and flat leaf or the curlier one will work. One third of a cup of chopped cilantro, and if you don't want any of these, guess what? This chicken is just gonna be so well seasoned that you're not gonna skip any flavor in your chicken. You're gonna be okay, I promise. So we're gonna go ahead and massage this for another 30 to 40 seconds just until it's well combined. And boom, done amigos, our chicken is well seasoned. You can save your marinade for later use, you can freeze it, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna place this right into our multi-cooker. One of our Views Cup friends suggested that we get the Aura Pro Instant Pot, and friends, we are not disappointed. So we are gonna get started today, and we are gonna press our sear button. Cloud, can you help us out? Sear, saute, saute. Hey! <laughs> okay, friends, this is your Tia Cloud telling you, just like I tell my sister, do not touch the pot. Wait three minutes, and you'll smell the heat in the air. And now we're ready to saute some pollito. and we're gonna allow the chicken to sear for a good five minutes. After about four to five minutes, you wanna flip your chicken. And now we're gonna slow cook for three hours. Friends, I'm trying not to be such a bossy mommy, but I do have to tell you, don't start making your sauce until you've cleaned your kitchen, okay? You don't need any of the chicken uh, heebie-jeebies around. And if you haven't taken a shower today after you're done making a sauce, make sure to take a shower. That's for the teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna need one cup of plain yogurt. If you have Greek yogurt, it works well with this recipe too. Don't feel obligated to just use plain. And then we're gonna add about half a cup of 
mayonnaise. Did you get a tattoo? What tattoo? The green on your wrist? I should. I was thinking a about. Leaf? Would you get a, a I don't know, I was cilantro. thinking about. <laughs> maybe I should get a cilantro leaf painted over um, my burn from last year. If you, don't, if you don't have a burn, then what are you doing in the kitchen? What are you doing in the kitchen? Tell us. Friends, it's because there was a lot of stress in my life last holiday season and I managed to burn myself here, but it's it's healing well. Mm -hmm. it, it's done well, it's just a mark. We're okay. <laughs> We're gonna add the juice of one key lime. If you don't have a key lime, the flavor is gonna differ, but you can use lemon or a regular lime. Works great, but if you ever get a hold of key limes, ooh, take advantage of it, friends. They are beautiful. We're gonna add a little small bunch of parsley. You don't have parsley, go with cilantro. And if I don't say cilantro that way, it doesn't taste as good. That's right. <laughs> I have a rep to protect, guys. We get more drama from not pronouncing the words in Spanish than we do the other way. So like if we say cilantro, our friends, our amigos that speak Spanish, our and our family will come for us, guys. Yes, and some of our views club friends would be like, <laughs> están haciendo, what are you guys doing? You guys know how to say it, so say it right. <laughs> You're gonna need uh, garlic, if you have two or three, it'll work perfect. One jalapeño. <laughs> you like how I said that? <laughs> but say it how you want to say it. Un jalapeño. You're gonna add one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of ground cumin. I love those acrylic spice containers. You got me into them. They are, they're magical, they're great. It took me a while to take them out of storage and now that they're here, I'm like, where have you been the past <laughs> few months, you know? <laughs> You're gonna need uh, one teaspoon of salt and now we are gonna blend until smooth. You guys ready to get to dancing? Yes, Was that here? one teaspoon of cumin? One teaspoon of each, yeah. Oh, okay, One teaspoon that's of black easy. pepper, one teaspoon of ground cumin and one teaspoon salt. And obviously you adjust your salt to taste before I forget, one fourth of a cup of olive oil. Friends, for those of you that get a little bit, um, like how much did you add stuff? Don't worry, it's all in the description area. I think we tried it for three recipes where we didn't add in the description area to see if you guys would prefer that. For those of you watching on your TV, hello. Um, so everything's in the description area and I'm trying my best to let you guys know the measurements as we cook. And boom, done, amigos. Our chicken is ready, it's juicy, it's tender, and I'm just gonna take it over to the chopping block and I'm gonna chop this up into little pieces like you would see at a taco shop because apparently I can't get enough tacos. But I'm gonna be letting you know. We dream of tacos. <laughs> we do dream of tacos and other things you can pair this chicken with. It doesn't have to be tacos and we'll talk about that while I'm chopping. We're gonna be using a roasted salsa today. I'll leave all the ingredients I used for this particular one today. All I did was roast, all the ingredients blend, and now I'm gonna cook it just a little bit to keep it nice and warm and to preserve it a little bit longer for me this week. I'm gonna be warming up some flour tortillas and then we are ready to start chopping up this chicken taco style. Mm -mm -mm. Before I start chopping our chicken, I wanna go over what we have here. I have some purple onions with a little bit of ground cumin and paprika. We have our red radishes, key limes, cucumber, freshly chopped iceberg lettuce, our cooked salsa. And for those of you that like a more milder but yet hot salsa, that one's gonna do it. Cause I know the salsa cien fuegos, you guys were on fuego <laughs> with that one. And here we have our chicken. You can really just use your fork to separate the chicken, but I want thin little slices like this. This is the look that I want to go for. I'm gonna make Cloud's first tasting taco and we're gonna add a good amount of chicken. Don't be stingy with the sauce. Do not be stingy with the sauce. <laughs> Now's not the time to be greedy. Nope. Be greedy with your personal time. Yep. <laughs> and then all you're gonna do is just boom, boom. Oh, let, don't let me forget because Cloud will come for me. Just a couple of radishes for me. There you go. Thank you. The limoncito. Thank you, sister. For Cloud. Mm. Oh my gosh, that sauce is spectacular with this chicken. And I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, ah. Uh, Buen provecho. Se va y se corre con el taco. Pro ah, 
iba así con el borracho, pero... Hey, 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 God has jokes today. <laughs> For those of you that know, mm. talk to me in the comments. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> You're awful. Mmm, necesito más salsita. Yummy. I can't get enough spice lately. I don't know what's going on with me. I love it. Me encanta. Oh, did you buy the Costco side of uh, Texas coffee down there? No, it's the H-E-B size. Oh, oh, okay. The San Antonio coffee blend. Oh my gosh, so good. Mmm. These are really juicy. Delicious. Mmm. Oh, I forgot I can't be dancing here. Yes, you can. Remember when you used to uh, pack these lonchecitos for me when I was in the office? Mm-hmm. I think everybody that remembers uh, me doing mukbang remembers when I used to tell them, if you have a single, you know, a family member or whatever, make sure to help them making uh, dinner, picking up the kids at school. Good looking out. Um, now I'm the single mama and I'm living my best life. Uh, hey, that's why I made you some agua fresca. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm. All right, we have a tip for you. I remembered <laughs> you can make the same dish with different kinds of protein. Mm -hmm. You can use pork and you can use fish. And is that it? Oh, tofu. You can use tofu as well. Mm -hmm. Sear it. You have to sear it. Sear it and then add the seasoning and then cook it for a few minutes if you're using tofu. Don't put your tofu in the multi cooker though. Use that one on the stove top, right? Mm -hmm. And this recipe is not just for uh, the multi cooker. You can do this on your pan. You can place it in the oven. You can place it in a regular uh, crock pot. Almost there's something else. Oh, I don't know what to say. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. Please let us know if you make this recipe. And we want to give a special shout out to all of you who are driving and not texting. And Cloud's giving me that look because she was almost hit by a texter on the road. So if you're texting, put your phone down, take your time. You are valuable to society and to your family. So don't text and drive. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. I've been making this chicken behind your back, not intentionally, but I didn't think anybody would want to try it. But Cloud just pulled out the camera and we're gonna get started with this recipe. The only thing that I've done is I've washed my chicken with some salt and I've pat dried it completely. You have to make sure that your chicken is completely dry. Not dry. It's completely Don't dry. Let it it. Dry. <laughs> Don't let it dry. It's completely dry everywhere. That includes the inside. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do you remember how I've taught you how to make several chili oils that are well seasoned and if you keep them on your counter for over a week, those flavors get so infused and absorbed into whatever you're blending them with. This is no different. You can use the birria chili oil, the green one, the jalapeno one, the extra hot, and this recipe will work. The one that I'm gonna use today that I really like because I'm gonna be using it for another recipe too is the birria verde chili oil. You're gonna take your birria chili oil. And if you guys like these containers, Cloud will link them in the description. I absolutely love them. They work great for this particular recipes. You're gonna take the oil and you're gonna pour it over your chicken. And it's serious. If I have that serious uh, resting face, it's for a reason. Um, why just the oil and not the seasoning? The seasoning will cause burning on your skin and we wanna have a beautiful crispy, flavorful skin. I will show you what part you can add some of the seasoning and brush it on the top, but right now that's not what you wanna do. Make sure that you're adding that oil to the inside of the cavity. Make sure that all parts of your chicken are coated with the oil. I will say this because I've tried this recipe many of times so that I can share my insight with you guys. If you place this chicken in a Ziploc bag or your container of preference that fits in your refrigerator, you can place a lot of oil on top of it, keep it overnight in your refrigerator, take it out, place it in your oven like we're gonna do now. And the longer it sits there, the flavor that comes out of this chicken just keeps on getting better. So there was this one time where I had this particular chicken and I had a frozen chicken. 
So what I did, I added a scoop of my Iberia chili oil into the Instant Pot, a little bit of water, and the chicken came out so juicy and tender, and that's, that's how this recipe began. <laughs> so make sure you coat your chicken well. Once you've lathered your chicken with the seasoned oil, do you want to place your oven at 420 degrees? And we are going to continue to bake for 45 to 50 minutes. In just 25 minutes, you can see how the skin is starting to just get that perfect crisp, that initiation. And I just wanted to show you guys that part. Look, that part's already crispy. Are we having stuffed chicken? What is that? No, but apparently you want to showcase everything that I was doing today. This is for uh, the soup dumplings I'm making. Oh. I've been really enjoying uh, making my babies their own Lunchables that's a lot healthier and it's been keeping them full longer. So you're making a recipe and then another recipe in between? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I have, I have this recipe and I have another recipe going on the stove. All right, it's time to check on that chicken. Yes, we need to check on the chicken. Here's my tip to you. If you preheated your oven for 30 minutes prior to placing your chicken in the oven, it's going to cook a lot faster and thoroughly. For example, I did it right before I placed my chicken. So now I'm stuck with a little bit of the juices in here and you can see they're a little bit undercooked there. Do you see that? Oh, okay. So if you did, if you did what I just did, you're going to have to keep it in here another 10 to 15 minutes. So I suggest you preheat your oven. It's going to make a huge difference. I allowed our chicken to sit here for 10 minutes, but I'm hoping that you can see the broth that developed in this little pocket right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, we can. Let it pour in. Oh, wonderful. And those are just juices. Those are those delicious juices that you don't want to miss out on. Another way for you to tell if your chicken's ready is any kind of liquid that comes out of your chicken is a clear broth. Okay. Now that we're done having fun with that, let mm. me set it to the side. All I can think about is this chicken and those <laughs> soup dumplings I'm going to be making tonight. Yummy. <laughs> Make sure you guys are following us on Instagram. I'll be posting uh, them there. So do you want to, you want the leg or do you guys want to see the chicken uh, breast? We'd like to see the chicken breast, meaning okay. we, me, and whoever likes breast. I like wings too. There's your wing for Thank now. you. I want somebody very special to say, ah. That's you, Jason Momoa. Oh my gosh, Cloud. Not right now, we're working. Mmm. Yummy. Oh my goodness. Ooh. I'm having an entanglement with this chicken. Can you hear the crispiness here? Mmm. Move my chicken wing. Are you doing the chicken wing? Mm -hmm. Friends, we're just here eating chicken. It's really juicy. That skin reminds me of the one from the Griswolds, but we still have a lot of juicy chicken in here. Cloud's engaged, you guys. She's engaged with this chicken. But I have some stories for you guys. <laughs> you don't have any stories. <laughs> I do have lots of stories. I've been awfully quiet lately. You have one story. Mm -hmm. I love that you love Cancerian people so much. It means the world to me. And on that note, we'll see you guys <laughs> on the next one. Bye. <laughs> Adios. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. In today's recipe, I'll be showing you how to make lentil soup in your Instant Pot. Add your five cups of water. If you want this to be a little bit more stewy, you only need to add four cups. Add the two cups of lentils. Next, you wanna add your potatoes. And I just cut our potatoes into small little cubes. Add your chopped zucchinis. Some vitamin A for cloud your carrots and friends just cut them into small little pieces i always find that they're better to to eat this way 
My older son doesn't have a preference for carrots that are cooked, but that's the way I can sneak it in. Your tomato. And next, you want to choose between an Anaheim and a Poblano pepper. If you're using a Poblano, make sure that if in the inside, when you slice it down the middle, it has a little bit of the orangey, red, yellow. Um, stay away from that one unless you like the heat, because that one's going to bring you a lot of heat. I sound like I'm scaring you guys. That's not what I'm trying to do. I know that you guys always ask about the peppers, the chiles, and they're really spicy, but that's uh, that's the best advice I can give and you. And you're so sweet. You always say it when it's a family recipe. It is. I want you all to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Add your onion and make sure that you chop it nice and fine, just like the Beast Club. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two garlics, ground cumin, and your choice of bouillon. If you like vegetable, use vegetable, beef, chicken make it comfortable for your home i have a question for you oh yes <laughs> did you uh pre-soak the lentils i washed them but i didn't pre-soak them because the instant pot's gonna do the job it's gonna do everything that we want right in here let Got me put it. a lid on it place your lid and seal the deal Ooh, oh it just did it naturally you close the vent okay. yes close your vent <laughs> next you want to pressure cook for eight minutes I feel like I'm here with the accordion. <laughs> Give me a beat, Cloud. Give me That's a beat. That's not a bad place to be. <laughs> oh, we got too excited. While our lentils are cooking, we're going to get started on our Mexican grilled cheese. And what makes this a Mexican grilled cheese? That we're using bolillo bread. Are those stains on your blouse or is that water? It's Cloud, water. I do my own stunts. I wash my own dishes. <laughs> Friends. Make sure you wash your dishes. Okay? Seriously, if you don't have those wet spots, like, did you really do the dishes? I know, everybody's like, you rarely get dirty. No, I just get splashes of water, but I rarely get dirty when I cook. That's true. So you're going to add your mozzarella cheese. Then I guess it's no longer Mexican. Excuse me? They use <laughs> queso crema in Mexico. Okay, okay. They okay. use cream cheese there. This is now Mexican, guys, apparently. <laughs> and our Mexican cheese here is queso fresco. Don't be scared of queso fresco unless you're getting the one from your tia that's in like the yellow juice. Yeah, that is yellow juice, non-pasteurized one is, is questionable, but it's good. And to make this even better, yes, I'm going to make this even better by adding some cotija. It just hits different. And lately, I don't even want to tell you how much I've been eating the past three days, but just know I'm a little embarrassed to be here today. <laughs> All right, friends, let's go cheese it up. Add your butter to a medium hot pan and while your butter's melting place your bolillo over it just allow it to dance just like that and boom done amigos our grilled cheese is ready and our soup is ready to serve now it's time to switch it to vent. Be very careful because the steam is really hot. Hotter than fire. And boom, done. We have a big pot full of lentils. All right, amigos, say ah. That's so rude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'd be quite the taste. It would be divine. Ooh, it's nice and hot. Say ah. Uh. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We want to say thank you to all of our unsubscribers and our subscribers and friends. If you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. Give us a thumbs up. And um, if you guys do that, Cloud will be a lot nicer to me because I always forget to say <laughs> that. <laughs> and on that one, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios.